we are back to talk about the third book in the Ransom Trilogy, what people today call the Space Trilogy, but there are a lot of people that don't like that because the third book doesn't take place in space. Nope. And the only thing it really has in com that they all really have in common is the character of Ransom. Yeah, that is the only thing they have in common. So Well, and the villains. The two guys that abducted him in Out of the Silent Planet, one of them comes back yeah. in the Venus book. Yes. And then the other one comes back in this in one. That hideous strength. But under a pseudonym. Yeah. So um that's kind of what you got. The story, correct me if I get this wrong, but okay. I'm going to take a shot at it. Go ahead. I always dump it on you to, Go, to do the, for it. the summary. We're back on Earth. There are these two organizations that develop. Mm -hmm. Obviously, one good, one evil. The first organization that develops, they're a very regimented kind of... Um, they're very like clinical scientific but mm -hmm. they're out to do evil yeah and, and they kind of have no boundaries with each other like internally yeah. it's kind of like keep everybody on their toes thinking they have a job but don't give them details mm -hmm. so that they're more happy when you give them a task even if it's shitty kind of yeah. thing or even if it's like really evil or makes you really question your morals yeah and i wasn't clear on this but i think the director of of the what, what's the name of the evil organization oh, it was it's... it was a good name <laughs> um, like a positive type name uh, memory is a tough thing yeah it is i i want to look it up now yeah nice mm -hmm. is that it was it nice yeah it was nice and i see nice. yeah it's an acronym and i think the director was the other villain from out of the silent planet Am I yes wrong? yeah yes and that's that's where the book, it got kind of confused. Yeah. He confusing wasn't the director because... though. He was like the PR person, like the okay. face of the place. But he had like no power. The director was someone else. Yeah. But they were associated previously and had a history together. He and, and the, the director. Un and the unfortunate thing is that the leader of both of these organizations, e each of those leaders had the same title, so they were always being referred to the same way. So I was getting mixed up on yeah. who was who because C.S. Lewis kind of jumps back and forth yeah. between the two organizations. You have to have a lot more context. And if, like, you're meeting out in the wild, essentially, yeah. <laughs> you're not meeting in nice or at the mansion, you mm -hmm. don't know where you are <laughs> Yeah. or who you're meeting. Yeah. But nice recruits this guy called Mark. Yeah. His name is Mark. And he has a wife. I forget her name. Jane or something like that. Yeah. But Mark is too busy being, you know, trying not to kill myself <laughs> while reading a sister. Like that. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Jane. Yes. Mark got involved with nice. He, he let himself be recruited by them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so he kept getting deeper and deeper, but his wife got recruited by the other organization being led by ransom. Mm hmm who, because he had fought off evil, he was now, what did they call it? The, um, from Arthurian, Arthurian legend. The Pendragon. Pendragon. Mm -hmm. He's the Pendragon all of a sudden. All, all of a sudden, the, the story goes all out for this whole King Arthur thing. Yeah. We're both Nice and um, Ransom are trying to revive Merlin. <laughs> for different reasons. Well, power they both, trip, sort they of. both think that Merlin has powers that will allow them to take over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, ransom for good, nice for evil. Mm -hmm. And so they have, they're in a race to see who gets to Merlin first. Yeah. And I'll leave it at there because more than that, if I could remember more than that would only spoil. Yeah, it really does all play into each other. Like, you can't really tell the full story without giving everything away. Yeah. Like, there's no other better stopping point than right there. Yeah. And really, there's no better stopping point than the end of Paralandra. Yeah. I kept, I very quickly named this that hideous book. Yes. For very obvious reasons. Yeah. You want to get into them? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll get into them for sure, because... It took until 
chapter six for the action to pick up. A lot of it was just talking and setting the scene. And it was a lot of setting the scene, mm -hmm. like a lot of it, mm -hmm. which was all done at the front end of the book. Yeah. Which took up a lot of time. It took a while for me to actually get into the book. Mm -hmm. So chapter six, it started picking up. Chapter 10 is when it got interesting. Yeah, I didn't think it picked up until ta chapter yeah, 10. Yeah, chapter 10 is when they really like hit like, oh, now it's now the meat of the story is happening. Now mm -hmm. things are actually happening. But most of it was everybody just sitting around talking politics with each other and like talking PR with each other. And these mm -hmm. scientists not even talking about science. Like a lot of the time, them just like backstabbing each other, being yeah. assholes yeah. in general. So that was uh, that was really boring to get through that first half. And then... By chapter 10, you're like, oh, so this is an Arthurian cop-out. There's no mm -hmm. space. There's no, like, you do see the Eldi or whatever. Like, they do encounter them. But this is no longer, it just went from, like, kind of science fiction fantasy to just fantasy. And yeah. the science fiction part went to crap. And the fantasy wasn't very strong. I no, think. no, it was just waiting around, f waiting for somebody to freaking find Merlin for right. more than half the book. And I was wanting to get deeper into this whole cosmology that he mm -hmm. had built around Christian beliefs about all the planets. And he brought in Greek mythology. I thought that was cool. And yeah. Out of the silent planet in Paralandra. But mm -hmm. then he goes and just kind of sets all that stuff aside and focuses on bringing back the pen dragon and merlin to perform some kind of magic miracles and i thought oh my god merlin really what are you kidding out. me this could have been so much better could have been a different alien for all we cared yeah that or, had been there you know what's the jesus uh, was an alien i could what, have taken what's that what's the ultimate there's a name for what you would call god in this yeah i can't remember what the term is um, it's not the ld it's the what start with a w i thought yeah i can't remember yeah but you know that was never brought in as a an yeah. actual character just kind of a distant thing you know and i mm -hmm. thought this book would would go there and yeah it didn't it just totally avoided it yeah so it was really slow and even the action wasn't very actiony yeah there was a lot of like there were some places where i felt like it hit home with current affairs like there's an entire chapter where the head of security at Nice was talking to Mark and being like, you know, the whole point of, you know, basically you write, she's like, she, I want you to write a story about why we're justified in basically taking over the police force in the nearest town, essentially. Yeah. And like how basically they're going to write about a riot before it happens. They're mm -hmm. or orchestrating a riot mm -hmm. to kind of get power. And so he, his job was, kind of to write newspaper articles mm -hmm. to these two periodicals and he's like well what articles are we writing are we writing for the liberals or are we writing for the conservatives literally using those words yeah are we writing for a liberal column or a conservative column she said both the whole point is to divide them further and turn them against each other <laughs> that's how we're going to get power we mm -hmm. get them fighting the whole reason we're going to get them fighting is so that we can go in and break up the fighting mm -hmm. to realize we're better prepared than anybody else to deal with this. And then yeah. we're just going to start taking over communities and kind of it ended up becoming a state of emergency in this area in England mm -hmm. because like they were orchestrating all these very warlike riots to happen mm -hmm. in these communities so that they could basically take over power and shut them down and then keep everybody nearby shut up about what they're doing. Right. If anybody figured it out right. and basically anybody tried to leave nice, they just kill them off mysteriously. Mm hmm. So, like, but that really hit home for me. Like, that felt very much <laughs> like the last election for me. <laughs> yeah. And it was just really funny how, like, oh, yeah, so it happens everywhere. It's not just the U.S. Yeah. And people see it happening all the time. So, and, yeah, it's happened through history. But mm -hmm. I don't feel like he really made the story about that. No. I, I feel, you know, then he brings in Arthurian legend. And, yeah as the solution to everything you know and it's there were just so many missed opportunities they really this. were especially with all those riots and conflicts there was so much more interesting action that could happen mm -hmm. and a lot of it was everybody just skirting around the action mm -hmm. i'm like this is the most boring <laughs> like i love dry literature but this really took the cake for me yeah <laughs> i was and, not pleased you know he he spent 
almost half this book setting it up. And it's not a short book. No, it's 400 pages. It's, yeah, here. It's, it's as long as Out of the Silent Planet and, and Paralandra Palandria. together. Yeah, so this this is an omnibus. So this last half here in the palm of my hand, this is that hideous strength. Mm -hmm. These are the other two books over here. What the heck? <laughs> like so, that's a lot so he spent a very long time setting this book up just before he, he really got into it and then once he gets into it it's just revive yeah. merlin revive and merlin and jane's marriage and, is troubled and then at that point it it i suppose you could make a really good fantasy out mm -hmm. of that concept of reviving merlin and yeah. bringing back the pen dragon but he didn't do it he kept jumping back and forth mm -hmm. in a way Between that got nice really and... confusing now we know c.s lewis is a great writer both that both out of the silent planet well out of the silent planet was a you know a early mm -hmm. learning yeah. book for him but perilandra was so strong we yeah know that he can write we were a great excited book. for this and then we were so let down <laughs> yeah I, I mean that hideous strength is just poorly written no it seemed like he was pushing too hard to do too much or like he was under stress of an editor yeah. or publisher to get something done. Yeah, that that's kind of what, what I'm speculating is that he didn't really want to write it, but he had a publisher that want, excuse me, wanted him to finish a trilogy or maybe he had a contract to mm -hmm. write a third book and they had already paid him for it. But yeah. he didn't really want to write it. He really wanted to write The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yeah. You know? And and just didn't have his mind or heart in that hideous strength. That's it just what it sounds, feels like. It feels like an entirely different book. It, like, well, it really is. It's like he just, it's like he had written a different book already. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, we need a third one for your, for your space trilogy. So he just changed some names and went with it. That's yeah. really what felt like, this felt like a mask for something else. Right. And it wasn't. Though all three books are, are that way. Out of the Silent Planet is definitely like fan fiction of H.G. Wells' First Man in the Moon. Yeah. And he admitted that. Yeah. Paralandra had a, a much denser writing style, mm -hmm. much more detail, much deeper yeah. story. Very and philosophical. And really, really changed, mm -hmm. but was really strong. Mm-hmm. That hideous strength just kind of went to pieces and, and yeah. fell apart. I felt like Jane and Mark were really cardboard main characters, too. Mm -hmm. He was a wimp with a no spine. Yeah. And she was a skeptic who was having prophetic dreams. Yeah. Like, they were really cardboard. <laughs> like, they... And they never really changed their minds about what they did by the end of the book. No. They were just both, like, at odds with each other. Their marriage had always been troubled. Like, none of it... Fe they weren't deep people. They weren't right. deep people. They were... And it seemed like it was intentional that they weren't deep people, but that made them... The rest of the story was just crap because of it. Yeah. There was no, there was no complexity whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There were unnecessary details in some parts and like boring details in another. <laughs> like <laughs> I didn't need all this bull crap. It just right. didn't feel. Yeah, it was not strong. No, nope. not like the other two. At least the other two were. You know, they were well written. Yeah. Like even the first one, yes, it was a little bit of H.G. Wells cop out, but it was well written. The second and one was far yeah, great world building. Yeah, great world building. The second one was extremely great yeah. originality wise, world building wise. But um, also had an engaging story. Yes. And this had nothing. Yeah. This I just wanted to throw it away. <laughs> the bear was the most exciting thing in this for me. <laughs> okay. The and, pet bear. And that, I mean, yeah, even that all the was other so fantasy cute. books that have a bear and, and Lion the Witch of the Wardrobe has the lion. Yeah. You know, it's like he wanted to write a different book. And yeah, just couldn't. it really was. It was very disappointing. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't. Ransom was hardly in it for someone who was such a pivotal individual. Yeah. I hated that. Mm hmm. Because it's he was the most the character with the most history that as a reader you had. Mm -hmm. And he hardly did. He was in, infirmed and in a bed 90% of the time. Yeah. And not even mentioned. Yeah. For more than half the book. Right. So it was like, you, you gave, he gave his audience nothing. Yeah. Of the was, original. It really it was. It was a letdown. It, there was so many missed opportunities. Of yeah. Why, where he could have gone with the story and just didn't. Yeah. 
I don't have any very many redeeming things to say about this book. Like, I think, no. I, yeah, if you like Arthurian legend, you might like this. Mm, but it takes yeah. a whole different direction from the other two books. It's almost like you should read that isolated. Yeah, I think if you like Arthurian re legend, mm -hmm. read T.H. White or, yeah. or some of the more modern. Yeah, this wouldn't be my first choice. Yeah. Yeah. But... That was kind of disappointing. I had ho I had high hopes for this one mm -hmm, because I have enjoyed so much of C.S. Lewis's work in the past, and the other two had. Yeah, and I had never read them, so yeah. this is my first experience with C.S. Lewis, and I I loved Out of the Silent Planet. I loved Paralandra. They were both way better than what I had read reviews of them in the past. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't ridiculously propagandistically Christian mm -hmm. like other reviewers have said and I, I'm thinking well man these are just good stories even yeah. though they're more fantasy than science fiction I was just enjoying them yeah and then this one comes along and it's like oh my god was he on I know. drugs I had was to really drunk? push through like it took me a while we actually had we had planned on doing this one earlier and it was so hard to get through I also had some health issues but it was really hard to get through it <laughs> because yeah. it was just like I don't even want to read this to distract me from the pain in my side from my kidney infection is how bad it was. I was like, yeah. I don't know what hurts more. <laughs> I felt really, that was probably the first time since Around the World in 80 Days that I've mm -hmm. actually had that as a struggle to get through a book. I felt okay. very similarly about Around the World in 80 Days as I did with this book. And it was just like. I don't know why I even wasted my time. <laughs> and you had, again, I have a very large copy too. Mm -hmm. So this is, a. I was fighting the book a little bit on this one. Cause when you get an yeah. omnibus, uh, an omnibus, even as a hardcover, it was still a lot to handle. It's not reading in bed material. It's yeah. sitting on a desk and sitting there. Mine was reading right. it. I think it was about as big as, I think mine's about as big as that. It's back here somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't, I didn't have a hard time reading it, but of course I'm usually sitting here reading or sitting out on the patio. So. Yeah, I'm usually laying in bed trying to not yeah. have the cat knock the book out of my hand. If I, lay, if I lay in bed, I fall asleep. I can't read that way anymore. Oh. I used to. I just don't, <laughs> just don't sleep. Just lay in yeah. bed and read. That's what I do. I can't do that Who anymore. sleeps in a bed? <laughs> sleep not in a me. recliner in the basement half the time. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. But yeah, it's one of those things where it's like. Okay, so I'm going to. You know, I. I when we were reading Paralandra, I found out about the Dark Tower by C.S. Lewis. He started writing it. He never finished it. Somebody did finish writing it mm -hmm. and they published it after Lewis's death in the 1970s. And so it's not a full novel, really. It's mm -hmm. more like a no novella. Mm hmm. And I rushed out, um, rushed online and mm -hmm. found a copy and bought it mm -hmm. along with some other short stories they wrote. And I was all excited to read that as the fourth of mm -hmm. the Ransom trilogy. And, and now I'm, I'm worried about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what have we gotten ourselves but I'm, into? But I'm still going to push forward and read The Dark Tower and do a video on it and report on it. But that hideous strength is really that hideous book it really is you don't want to even waste your time this is not going to be on our top tales list no. which i hate because i i don't like having an incomplete i series know in, in i know list. because yeah. they should intertwine so seamlessly that you can't yeah you can't think of separating them ever that's kind of why i have yeah, the harry I mean, potter can, series in there can you cause... imagine reading fellowship of the ring and the two towers and loving them and then reading return of the king and, and going being like what a piece of crap yeah <laughs> yeah there um, are people, but yeah, it's, it know. is really, it's, it's hard because they should go together so seamlessly that it is all one story. And this feels so other, yeah. this is such an other story. It's mm -hmm. not, it's, it's barely anything to do with the first two. So it feels like it's not even part of the series at all. Yeah. So I hope, I hope your dark tower. Thing yeah. Goes we'll, well see if dark tower can redeem the series and bring back. I bought some the ebook because I didn't want to risk buying the hard copy. Yeah. Just in case you said, actually, it sums up things nice and brings it all together like it seemed like it should have. It's kind of <laughs> what I'm hoping happens, but... We'll see. We will see. So, 
That's so all. stay tuned for that one. Yeah, yeah, that's all I got to say about this, I, except we yeah. should put it to rest and never Sorry talk if you about like this whole series, that hideous book, Strength, is... <laughs> It's just not, it, it's not our cup of tea, unfortunately. Yeah, it was I've a letdown. I've seen YouTube videos that say how this, how the whole series, but including that hideous strength, is, is such great literature. And, well, I don't know. Um, can't, can't relate. From a, you know, we're just readers. We're not professors. Yeah. We just are looking for good As books As part to of read. the fandom. Stuff that's fun and interesting and has some cool ideas mm -hmm. and some cool imagination. And this totally let us down. It's not that. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of, it feels like letting down the fandom. Mm -hmm. It's like seeing episode one and having to deal with, emotionally deal with Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> yes. Like, that's how it felt for me where it's like, okay, as a child, it was fine because I needed that comedic relief as a kid. Because that was a heavy story otherwise <laughs> for a kid to digest without comedic relief. But yeah, when I got that... older, yes, he's annoying. I mean, and that's what this book was to me. It was the Jar Jar Binks. Of George my... Lucas, what, you know, what was he thinking about that? Because Jar Jar Binks is so, such a thinly veiled racist stereotype. He's terrible. He really is. As a kid, I didn't understand it, but I needed the laughter amidst all the war going on as a kid. But yeah. now that I'm older, I'm the like... The earlier movies, C-3PO provided that. Yeah. You know, the English butler robot. That was hilarious. Yes. We loved it. Why couldn't you just stay with that? Yeah. <laughs> Stick to that. That's all I needed. Mm -hmm. Just a little something to laugh at through that thing. But honestly, there, there was nothing to laugh at at this. There was some, like, almost borderline sexism things that bothered me in this story, too. Yeah. Like, the whole, like, stay with your husband even though you have nothing in common. Like, basically, like, she was considering divorcing Mark. Mm -hmm. And, like, just wanted nothing to do. They had such separate lives. And I'm like, they're like, no, stay together and have a baby. Your baby's gonna be something. Apparently, it was, it was significant for them to have a baby. It was, like, a briefly mentioned thing. I'm like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> that was it? Just mentioning it? What? Mm -hmm. Like, is this a messiah thing that we're dealing with? And that and was another missed opportunity. Nothing. He didn't develop that. No development whatsoever. Situation. It, it could have led to a really great denouement to this book. But yeah. No. Just no. Pass just it off. <laughs> just a blip on the radar and then gone. And I was yeah. like, oh, just divorce. <laughs> that yeah. would make this a way better book. Everybody just divorce each other. <laughs> Be done. Yeah. I but don't know. Written in 1947, so you got to expect some yeah. stereo stereotypical mm -hmm. attitudes that we don't agree with today. Yeah, but yeah, it was bad. All right. Yeah. So that's all for this one. Yeah. We'll see you again. Yep. See you next time. Like, subscribe. Bye. Bye. <laughs>